Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, ending the year with a bang, it's my 57 book December wrap-up. So anyone who's been watching my weekly wrap-up videos during December will know that I've been reading a ton of books, but my reading has got completely out of control. That is partly because I've had time off work, partly because it's that kind of chilled out holiday period where in between uh, seeing friends and family you have a bit of downtime, and also because I've been trying to get through a load of books for my Rebot Your Own Challenge where I'm reading 100 books I already own before I can buy any new ones. So all of those things have combined uh, to see me reading 57 books uh, in December. A lot of those books are shorter books. So, um, you know, not necessarily novellas and things like that, but shorter novels in the kind of 200 to 250 page uh, kind of area. Uh, and a few volumes of manga read, uh, read this month as well. Um, so I will talk through all 57 of the books. Obviously, if I was going to detail on them, it would take a very long time. So I'm not going to do that. But what I'll do is a lot of the books I read were in series where I read multiple books from that series during the month. So for those ones, I'll, when I show the first book, I'll talk a bit about the series. Um, and then I'll just show you the other books I read in that series as we go. But what I'm going to try and do is show you the books I read in the order that I read them. Because one of the things I did this month, as you may remember if you watched my December TBR video, is aside from books that I had that were kind of fixed in on my TBR because they were part of reading events or buddy reads or things like that, um, for the other books I read this month, I did a, a kind of game where I picked a book to start the chain and then every book I read had to be connected in some way to the previous book. So because of that, I'm going to show you the books in order. Um, so in terms of that Rebot Your Own Challenge then, I am now at 80 books. So I'm filming this on the 1st of January. I've read 80 books. I'm still aiming to finish it by the end of January. 20 books in a month is achievable for me, albeit this is going to be a much busier month in terms of, you know, I'll be at work full time this month. I haven't got any time off. But I think I can, I think I can do it. I think I can still finish by the end of January. Um, so just reflecting then on events that I took part in this month and when I go through the, the books I'll reference the events they were part of. So the main one for me then was Remember December which I was one of the co-hosts of which was a re-readathon so a readathon uh, focusing on rereading books so I read or reread a few things for that and then also took part in some buddy reads and a couple of like group reads this month as well. So I'll reflect those as I, as I go through the list. Right so I've got my iPad in front of me with the full list. What I normally do on these wrap-up videos is hold up a stack of books at the start, but there's just too many to do that. I, it would inevitably end in disaster. Um, right, so um, let me start with, well, let's start at the beginning. So the first book I finished this month then, uh, I read on Kindle, that was My Darling Girl by Jennifer McMahon, uh, which was a, a, a kind of a, a mix of horror story and uh, domestic thriller which was quite fun, a possession story. It was quite entertaining. I read it for the project I did where I was reading as many as I could of the top 10, uh, like the, the final shortlist for the Goodreads Choice Horror Award for this year. So um, I thought My Darling uh, my darling Girl was, was okay, but it wasn't fantastic. Um, after that, I read... Right, let me get my stack of books. After that, I read for... Um, for Sarah the Bookish Knitter for her Patreon uh, book club. Um, I read Come Toy With Me by Cara Summers from this uh, Mills and Boone Blaze Double that uh, Sarah very kindly sent me a copy of. Um, so this was fun. So this was a Christmas romantic suspense story about a woman who runs a toy store that's being used unbeknownst to her for drug smuggling um, and this uh, kind of gritty like Navy captain or something like that, I think he is, who goes undercover um, to work in her toy store, uh, pretend to be her boyfriend and uh, and solve the mystery. So it was just a fun, silly, slightly spicy romantic suspense novel. So that was fun. Uh, after that, I read the first of, um, a, of the Bernie Rodenbar books. So I read a load of these this month. This is actually, I think, the second in the series. So this was The Burglar in the Closet. So I read about four or five of these this month and I'll, I'll, talk, to, I'll talk to them as I go through the list. So this is by Lawrence Block, uh, who's a fantastic crime writer whose books I always enjoy. So Burglar in the Closet um, is about 
uh, Bernie Rodenbar, who's the burglar of the title, who's like a, a burglar, but kind of a decent burglar. You know, he's, a, he's an OK guy. It doesn't hurt anyone. Um, uh, but inevitably gets involved in um, murders. So not murders he commits, but murders seem to happen around him, as they do with, um, you know, sleuths in detective series. Um, so in this one, he's burgling a woman's apartment. He has to hide in the closet because she comes back unexpectedly and then she's murdered. So it's about him solving that mystery. So these books, and I won't go into detail on, on all of them, but these books are just really fun murder mysteries. Um, Bernie is a really, really engaging narrator. He's just a really fun guy to hang around with. Um, so there's a bit of humour in them. They're always suspenseful, have really good mysteries. So I really recommend them if you if you enjoy mystery novels. Um, next then, something completely different. So for uh, Remember December, um, I read Rage by Richard Backman, aka Stephen King from this Backman Books collection. Sorry, I've got too many things and not enough hands. So this was to reread a book you've basically forgotten. So I knew that I'd read Rage because I knew that I'd read all of the Backman books, um, but I didn't remember it at all. So it's a very early Stephen King novel written when he was a teenager about a, um, a high school kid who kind of loses it one day and, and takes his class hostage and, and kills a couple of teachers. So it's a book that King has subsequently removed from publication. He's taken it out of print because it was linked to a few a few real high school shootings in, in America. And it was it was an interesting it was interesting to read a very, very early Stephen King book given how influential he's been. But it's but it's also quite a problematic book. There's there's definitely I can definitely understand why he's taken it out of print. He, you know, the, the main character is presented as kind of a hero and it's, you know, very uncomfortable reading as a result, particularly given what subsequently happened with the book. So completely understand why he took it out of print. I didn't particularly enjoy it, if I'm honest. After that, another uh, troubling book, uh, Tamper by Alyssa Nutting. So this is a book I read for my ongoing Disturbing Books project. So this is a book based on a true case about a female high school teacher who has a relationship with one of her students. Um, it was an interesting book and it's a book that's kind of stuck with me more than I expected it to. It reminds me, I do intend to do a review of it on the channel at some point because I think it's worth talking about. It reminded me a bit of like a kind of noir story in that you've got these this central character who's doing something that they know is outside of like the law outside of the rules of society and is kind of almost waiting to get caught. You know, it's inevitable that she's going to get caught. So there is a tension there which makes it quite a compelling read. I mean, some of the, it, it's incredibly graphic in the detail of, of what she, you know, what she does with this kid that she's seduced. Um, so it's definitely very troubling from, from that perspective. But it was quite gripping as a, a kind of almost like a, a suspense novel. Um, after that then, something, <laughs> something very, very different, but again set in a school. Uh, so How to Be Top by Geoffrey Willans and Ronald Searle. So this is the second of the Molesworth books. Um, or is it the first of the Molesworth books? I'm getting lost. There's just too many books on this list. I think it's the second of the Molesworth books. So these were a series of books um, about a schoolboy written in the 1950s in the UK, set in this minor public school called St Custard's. And... Mm -hmm. you, you, the, and Molesworth, the main character, is like the narrator. So, so the books are written by him in a very unique style. They're very, very funny, quite surreal, increasingly surreal as the as the series continues. I read all of the I, I read all of the the books in the series. So there's four books in total. This is book two. I also read books three and book four. So just really fun, very, very, very amusing. I read them when I was a kid, um, and it was really very pleasurable to to revisit them. Um, right, after that then, another one for Remember December. Um, so for this one, the prompt was, uh, reread a book to find out how you really feel about it. So the book is Zoe by an author called Dirk Wittenborn. So this came out, I think, in the late 80s. Um, well, no, early 80s, 83. I read this as a teenager, so I got a copy of it out of my local library. And it really made an impression on me at the time. So I was keen to reread it to see if I still liked it as much as I remember liking it. Um, and I didn't, perhaps perhaps inevitably for a book I read as a teenager. So this is kind of a coming of age type story about this young woman from Texas, I think, um, 
who becomes a like a supermodel effectively. Um, and it was interestingly told in that it's told from the perspective of another character. A large part of this book is the romance between Zoe and this this guy who she meets early on in the book. But he's not the narrator either. So the fact that there was this third party kind of telling their romance was quite interesting. Um, and it was it was a fun read, but definitely not as as impactful as I as I remembered it being. Um, Right, after that then, for my Patreon book club, we read uh, Mayfly by CJ Leed, which I think pretty much everyone else in the group really, really enjoyed, but I thought was quite disappointing. I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, so this is about this this young woman, Maeve, who works as effectively a Disney princess, but is also kind of a serial killer. So the book gets increasingly weird and increasingly gory as it progresses, and she, she bumps off various people. It was... It was interesting in many ways. It's packed with like cultural references and things like that, which was a, a bit overwhelming at times and kind of distracted from the story a bit. But there is some fun stuff in here. I particularly liked the kind of musical references in it. Um, but overall, I just felt like it was trying a bit too hard to me uh, for me, and I, I didn't particularly enjoy it. Um, right, next up then. Uh, so another one of the Miles Royce books, so the third in the series, uh, Wiz for Atoms, again by uh, Jeffrey Willens and Ronald Searle. Um, next then, we have the first book in the ongoing chain. So um, there's a few things further down the list that were still part of my core TBR for the, for the month, but I couldn't start them for various reasons at that point in the month. Um, so I started this, this chain. So the book that I picked in my... December TBR video using a fairly random method of, of coin tosses um, was The Witch's Book 2, The Trial by James Dark. So this is a series of books. There's eight in total in the series. They're very hard to come by nowadays. I've managed to track down copies of the first six, but not seven and eight yet, sadly. Um, so set during the uh, you know kind of witch hunting period um, in, I think, just after the, the English Civil War. Um, oh, no, during the English Civil War, actually. Um and about this guy, so the hero, John Ferris, who's uh, like beloved, has been taken uh, by the witch finder who thinks she's a witch. And it's the books are basically about him trying to get her back. Um, so as you can probably tell from the cover, they are, <laughs> they are quite sleazy. So full of sex and violence um, and somewhat sadistic kind of sexual violence at times. But they are engagingly written. They are quite fun. There's a lot going on in them. Um, so I had a, a really good time with them. So I read uh, I read this one and the, the other ones, so three, four, five and six, which I will show as I get to them in the list. So the book I read after the, that then uh, was uh, Caleb Thorne, book one, The First Shot, which is by an author called L.J. Coburn. So the connection between this and the Caleb Thorne book is um, well, there's two connections. So the first one is that there is a character in this book called Caleb Thorne. Um, and, an, um, and I knew when I was reading it, I remember when I was reading it, that I had a book with a character called Caleb Thorne in it, i.e. the Caleb Thorne book. What I then discovered when I researched it is that they're actually written by the same person. So LJ Coburn is a guy called Lawrence James, who is also James Dark. So Lawrence James wrote a ton of... Uh, like trashy, pulpy books in the UK in the 70s and 80s, a few other of which I've, I've read over the years. Um, he's, he was someone who was just very good at turning out a short, quick, exploitative uh, piece of fiction that the publishers could you know, could pump out in news agents and things like that. Um, so yes, so the Caleb Thorne book then was a, um, so again, Civil War set, but the American Civil War rather than the English Civil War. Um, and the Caleb Thorne, the, the central character, was just an absolutely repellent <laughs> individual. Really awful. There's some there's there's some stuff in this book about kind of slavery, which, as you might expect, is quite exploitatively handled. So so um, you know, trigger warning there. Um, but it was still quite an engaging and entertaining read. Again, full of sex and violence. Um, but I enjoyed it enough that I will read other books in the Caleb Thorne series. They're all available fairly cheap on, on Kindle. Um, right, after that then, I read Hearn the Hunter, book three, The Black Widow, by John J. McLaglen, who is also Lawrence James, albeit I think John J. McLaglen was Lawrence James and another guy who, who co-wrote um, a few books. So another Western, this one about this guy, Hearn the Hunter, who is 
trying to track down the people who murdered his wife. So this is book three in the series. I think the murder happens in book one and, you know, in, in book one and then book two, he starts going after them. In this one, he gets like the final two who are this awful pair of brothers. Um, so it was a it was a fun, you know, nasty revenge type Western. So I, I quite enjoyed that one, too. Um, after that, then, so going back to my original TBR and breaking the chain for a moment. Um, so I finished listening to True Grip by Charles Portis. So I'd started listening to this at the end of the month, but I tend to listen to audio books, you know, whilst reading other books as well. Um, so um, I read this for Remember December, the prompt being to reread a book in a different format. So I've read True Grip last year and really, really enjoyed it, read it on Kindle. Um, this time I listened to the audiobook, which is narrated by the author Donna Tart, uh, famous for The Secret History and other books. And it was it was great. I love True Grit. It's a great story, a fantastic Western um, about this this young girl, Matty Ross, who's who's trying to get revenge for the murder of her father and teams up with this couple of marshals. It's just a really engaging story. And, and Matty Ross as the or Matty Ross as the uh, narrator is fantastic and Donald Tart did a fantastic job of capturing the voice of of Matty Ross in her narration of the audiobook so I really thoroughly enjoyed it it was a great book to revisit even though I only read it last year and Donna Tart's narration really added something to it so that was that was wonderful um, after that then another one from my original TBR uh, so The Tremor of Forgery by Patricia Highsmith so I'm reading I have been reading this year We've, so Anne from the Channel Land novella and I are working our way through all of Patricia Highsmith's books. We will continue it next year. We're, we're over halfway now. So The Tremor of Forgery, kind of typical Highsmith in some ways in that it's about Americans abroad. Um, so this American guy who's in uh, Tunisia, I think, Tunisia or Morocco, I forget, somewhere in North Africa, um, who's there to make a film. Um, which he wrote the screenplay for. He's waiting for the the director to come out and the director just keeps on not turning up. So it's about his life, where he's living and you know various things that happen. There is a crime element to it, a mystery element to it, as you would expect with a Patricia Highsmith book. And there's also some really interesting reflections on kind of American imperialism in, this, in the second half of the 20th century. So, you know, kind of anti-communist drive um, from the American government. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a fun read. Not as good as some of the other Highsmith books that I've read, but I did enjoy it. Um, right, going back then to this ongoing chain of books. So you remember the last book in the chain was Hearn the Hunter. The next book I read was Open Season by David Osborne, which is about a group of hunters. Um, so this was this was good. I I really enjoyed this. So I think I read this when I was a teenager, but I can't. It, it, nothing in nothing when I was reading it particularly came back to me, let's put it that way. But I definitely had a copy of it because I remember the cover very vividly. Um, so this is about a group of um, like apparently upstanding um, American like middle class guys who every year go away for a week to their hunting lodge um, in the you know out, out in the woods and they kidnap a couple of people and then set them free and hunt them basically. So it's a an, an intriguing concept, a concept that's been done before in other ways, but an intriguing concept, really, really suspensefully done. I really, really enjoyed it. And there's a really nice twist in this one. Um, some, you know, fairly grimy detail in there, but a really gripping and enjoyable thriller. I did I did have fun with it. And I'm going to try and check out some more stuff by David Osborne. He has written a few other things over the years. I think this is one of his first books. Um, right, going back then to my... Uh, original TBR then so a book I read as a buddy read so I do a buddy read every month with one of my patrons uh, this time I did it with my patron Burnout and we read Dark Gods by T.D. Klein which is a very famous like well respected collection of four horror novellas which was I had a bit of a mixed uh, a mixed response to but overall I thought it was I thought it was excellent two of the stories in particular were absolutely phenomenal really creepy really gripping um really engagingly written and and have that sense of uncanniness that that great horror can give you sometimes where you know what you're reading can't possibly be real 
but there's just this nagging thing in the back of your mind. Um, really, really effectively done. The other two stories I had some problems with, but uh, but overall, I thought it was a really, really good collection. Um, and very definitely interested to read T.D. Klein's novel, The, the Ceremonies, um, which is a book I used to own a copy of, but never got around to reading. Right, let's... Um, Right, let's continue then. So, so the next thing I read was neither part of my original TBR or the ongoing chain, but I'd really been enjoying the Molesworth books. So I read the next of the Molesworth books, which is Back in the Jug again, um, again by Jeffrey Willans and Ronald Searle. Um, I then read, uh, so going back to the chain of books, I read uh, Fast Charlie uh, by Victor Gishler, uh, originally published as Gun Monkeys. So the connection to this book being in the cover of both books, there's a guy wearing like all one colour or all one pattern on the front. Um, so you've got Pierce Brosnan from the newly released movie here wearing <laughs> wearing all brown. Um, so this was just a really fun, very fast paced, very action packed kind of pulpy crime novel um, about this guy who's like a, a kind of minor enforcer. Um, who gets involved in something you know far bigger than he's used to. The, the body count in this book was just off the charts. Um, so and, and it was it had that nice kind of pulpy, punchy prose to it. So I I had a really good time with it. I enjoyed it a lot. Definitely recommend it if you like that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, really fast paced, really action packed. Some some good humour in it as well. Um, very enjoyable. Um, right after that, then um, I read. Um, so the next book I read. So this book, Fast Charlie, the next book I read features a character called Fast Eddie. Uh, so this was The Colour of Money by Walter Tevis. Um, so this is the, the second of Walter Tevis's books featuring Fast Eddie. So Fast Eddie is a pool hustler. Um, the first book is The Hustler. Um, in this book, which was written a couple of decades later, Fast Eddie, who in the first book is like a, you know, a kind of young, young buck. Um, in the second book is a middle-aged guy who's trying to kind of trying to get back his glory days. Um, it was great. I really enjoy, so it's about him like entering various pool tournaments and things like that and trying to train himself to be a great pool player again. Uh, and there's something about that kind of underdog story that just always gets me. Um, so I really thoroughly enjoyed this. Some really interesting reflections on, you know, kind of midlife crisis and things like that as well. Um, very, very enjoyable. I liked it a lot. Um, right, next then I read, so... Um, Colour of Money, book two in the series. I then read book two in the Happen Leonard series by uh, Joel Lansdale, uh, which is Macho Mojo. So this is a series of um, kind of mystery thriller type novels set in Texas about this couple of guys, Happen Leonard, who are just like best buddies, basically, but who always get involved in you know various crimes that are going on that they end up having to, to try and get a resolution to. Um, the thing that's interesting about the books is um, Hap is a you know kind of a, a white Texan guy. Um, Leonard also Texan but black and gay. Um, so you get a nice um, you, you get some nice reflections on racism and homophobia and things like that, which are really really well handled. But in particular, you get this great relationship between Hap and Leonard, which is really fun to read. They're always kind of you know sparring with each other and joking with each other and they're just a really engageable engageable engaging kind of buddy couple at the center of these books so read Macho Mojo which is the second in the series I then read The Two Bear Mambo which is the third in the series I then read Bad Chili which is the fourth in the series and then I finished my Happen Leonard reading with Rumble Tumble so I had a lot of fun with Happen Leonard this month um, I then read another book, a different book by Joel Lansdale. So I read The Drive-In, book three, The Bus Tour. So the Drive-In series, very different from Happen Leonard, does have an element of comedy in it as well, albeit a much darker comedy. So this is a series of books about a drive-in in Texas that gets kind of plucked out of reality, uh, isolated from everything else, and a weird kind of society grows up there. Um, so their books are very strange, very graphic, but but quite fun. Um, and were my first experience of Joel Lansdale. So the first Joel Lansdale book I ever read was the first driving book back in the 80s at some point. Um, so I had fun with that. I then um, read The Witches, so book, driving book three. So I read then read The Witches book three, The Torture uh, by James Dart, which is m more of the same, uh, witch finder -iness. I then read the third book in the Boney Rodenbar series, The Burglar Who Liked to Quote Kipling, uh, again by Lawrence Block. So another really fun uh, Boney Rodenbar book. Um, I then read um, another book by Lawrence Block, 
so this is one that was originally published, I think, in the 60s, uh, called Killing Castro, which is one of the kind of pulp novels he wrote back then. This one being about five Americans who are hired to go to Cuba and assassinate Fidel Castro. Um, so that was a, a very pulpy, but fun read, very much of its time, but um, entertaining. So I then listened to uh, an audiobook of a book that's not part of this ongoing chain, but I just needed an audiobook to listen to. So that was Gwendy's Magic Feather by Richard Chismar. The second in the Gwendy series of books, the first being uh, Gwendy's Button Box, which was by Chismar and Stephen King. So this is an interesting series of books, but I'm not sure I love them. I quite like the first one. This one I didn't like so much. So um, in the first one, Gwendy discovers this button, this this weird button box that kind of gives her magical powers, gives her the ability to, to change what's happening in the world. In this second book, so in the first book, she's a teenager. In the second book, she's grown up. She's become a successful writer. She's like a congresswoman. Um, and she goes home for Christmas. So it's quite fun reading it at, at Christmas time. Um, and there's a serial killer operating in the town that she she grew up in. So it's about her, about the kind of the investigation into that. But it, it kind of, it's it's a very short novel or maybe even a novella. And it ended up feeling quite rushed to me. Like the resolution at the end just felt like it was it was too hurried. Um, right, so back to the chain then. Um, so I then read another um, Bernie Rodenbar book. So the connection to the previous book being Lawrence Block again. Um, so this was The Burglar Who Studied Spinoza, which was another very enjoyable murder mystery. I then went back to the Witches series and read book four in the Witches series, uh, which was The Escape. Um, I then read book five in the Witches series, uh, which was The Meeting. I then went back to Bernie Rodenbar and read book five in the Bernie Rodenbar series. So this is The Burglar Who Liked to Paint Mondrian. Uh, which was re which was really really fun and had some interesting discussions about kind of art appreciation and things like that. Um, I then read book five in the Doc Savage series. So this was Brand of the Werewolf by Kenneth Robeson. Uh, or Kenneth Robeson being a house name rather than the, the actual name of the author. I'm not sure who wrote it. Um, this was fun but not as good as the previous Doc Savage books I've read. So Doc Savage is like this kind of Superman type character who can do anything. Um, in this one, um, some relatives of him, his are getting threatened and he kind of travels to try and save them um, from this gang who use the, uh, the symbol of the werewolf as like their, you know, kind of calling card. Um, but, it, but yeah, it definitely wasn't as crazy or as fun as the other books I've read in the um, in the Doc Savage series. Um, next then, so using werewolf um, as the jumping off point, I read Werewolf Skin by R.L. Stein. Uh, one of the Goosebumps books. So this was really fun. So like a kid's werewolf novel about this young young kid who goes to stay with, an, with his aunt and uncle in this strange town where there's definitely something going on with werewolves. And that's, you know, pretty clear right from the start. And it's just about him trying to figure out what's going on whilst also trying to fit in at school and things like that. So a, a fun uh, kind of middle grade horror book. Um, then read um, some more uh, kind of middle grade fiction. So I read Five Go Off to Camp by Enid Blyton. Um, so Enid Blyton, a very successful British writer of children's books. Um, this one, I think, came out in the late 40s. Um, and it, the, the, the famous five um, who the series are, are about are four kids and a dog um, who kind of get involved in solving mysteries and things like that. So it was it was a fun uh, kids crime book. Um, I then read another book by Enid Blyton. Uh, so Secret Seven on the Trail. So the Secret Seven was another uh kind of gang of kid detectives that she wrote books about. Um, this one was fun. Um, it was kind of almost a bit postmodern in a way in that the, the famous five were referenced in this book. Um, and, you know, one of the characters talked about the fact that they enjoyed reading the famous five books. Um, so, yeah, another another kind of fun kid's mystery. Um, then went back to R.L. Stein. So, uh, you know, another kid's book and read um, Monster Blood for Breakfast, um, which was um, which was entertaining. Um, I didn't like this one nearly as much as Werewolf Skin, but it was still quite a fun book. Um, I think I've got my order slight, slightly wrong because I then got this one, Atomic Werewolves and Man-Eating Plants. So I think I read this one, actually, I read a load of books in one day, basically. I think I read this one between Doc Savage, Brand of the Werewolf and Werewolf Skin. Um, so this is from the Mentor Venture Library, who do a fantastic job of reprinting... Um, like stories and articles from old men's adventure magazines from the 50s 60s and 70s so you get amazing artwork like that as well as really good stories so this one focused on kind of weird stories so like science fiction and horror type stuff 
It's a really interesting article about Weird Tales magazine and like the legacy of Weird Tales. Um, so yeah, really, really entertaining read. If you like that old style of kind of slightly pulpy fiction, I really recommend the, the Men's Adventure Library stuff. Um, right, so after Monster Blood for Breakfast then, um, I read, and I'm needing to move to a new stack of books now, so bear with me for a sec. Um, so I read, using Monster as the jumpy off point, I read uh, Monster Volume 8 uh, by Naoki Urasawa, um, so just a fantastic uh, manga thriller series, which I've absolutely loved. Um, so I read that and then read the final book in the series, uh, Volume 9. Great conclusion to the to the series. I really do recommend this series. It feels a bit like me to like Robert Ludlum or someone like that. It's that kind of 70s style of, of thriller, but really, really enjoyable. Um, then read a couple more volumes of manga. Um, so I read Tokyo Babylon by Glitch, which is an early 90s manga series. I didn't really connect with this, if I'm honest. Um, it was okay, but I, I didn't I didn't love it. Uh, what I did love, though, was Glitch by uh, Shima Shinya, which I read next, which was really enjoyable. So about a gang of school kids investigating weird goings on in their town. It was just really cute and fun. Um, and I think I will read more in this, in this series. Um, after that... Uh, Another book that was not on my um, not on my original list, but one that I read um, because I needed an audiobook to listen to. Um, that was A Murder of Quality by John le Carre. Um, so I've asked my patrons to kind of recommend to me books that they think I'll enjoy. This one was recommended by Richard. Um, and this was a, an excellent murder mystery. So it's the second in the George Smiley series of books and has Smiley going to this public school to investigate um, a, a murder there, a death there. Um, and just really a really solid murder mystery but some really interesting kind of reflections on the class structure in, in British society at the time as well. Um, right so going back to the chain of books then so after Glitch which was about school kids investigating weird goings on um, I read The Midnight Club by Christopher Pike uh, which is a book about again about a group of kids in a weird situation so in this one it's a uh, about a hospice and the teenagers who are you know staying there living out the rest of their lives they're all of them with terminal conditions so a very sad book um but and, and quite an interesting book but one i didn't love i suspect if i'd read this as a teenager i would have thought it was fantastic but i didn't love it as an adult um so effectively the kids in order to kind of i suppose distract themselves from the pain of what they're going through they they get together every night at midnight and they tell each other like weird stories basically so the weird stories themselves are quite fun um but the book overall for me didn't particularly hang together um after that another kind of ya horror um book um so clown in the cornfield by adam cesar um which was just a, a, a fun slasher um, about this girl who moves to a new town there's weird stuff going on um, there's this like this creepy barn that she can see from her house with a mural of a clown on the side of it um, and people start dying and there's a clown going around killing people basically so that was a, a fun kind of YA slasher um, after that another clown book so The Circus of Hungry Clowns by Cesar Ruel, um, which is a um, a horror novella um which the author sent me a copy of to, to read, which was which was fun. So about a very creepy circus where horrible things happen um, and about a dad whose kid goes missing who's trying to figure out what's going on. Um, then read another uh, creepy clown book, Carney by R. St. Clair, the host of uh, the booktube channel Regina's Haunted Library. So a really entertaining horror novel um, about this, this kind of creepy clown figure who's a kind of a bit of an urban legend. Um, and this guy who's a disgraced journalist who's trying to rebuild his career um, and investigate what's what's going on with this Carney character. Um, the thing that really made this book for me was the central character, the journalist character, who I thought was really, really interestingly done. Um, after that, some more um, indie horror. So I read The Soxorcist by J.B. Court, which is a book about a, um, a sock puppet exorcist um, trying to exorcise a demon, um, it's, very, it's a very strange book, but it's quite fun. Uh, so just a short story, but entertaining. Um, after that, uh, more horror short stories. So I read Perpetual Dread by Brian Bowyer. A very, um, very graphic, very extreme, very weird, but very enjoyable 
um, collection of short stories. There's something about the way Brian Bowyer writes that I just really connect with. So I enjoyed that enormously. Um, moving on then, more short stories. So another book from the Men's Adventure Library. So I read Croc Attack, um, which features stories about crocodile and alligator attacks. Uh, again, really fun. Some great kind of reprints of artwork and things like that in here. It was, uh, and, and like vintage adverts as well, which are delightful. Um, so yeah, really, really enjoyed this a lot. Uh, and you know, who doesn't like really about crocodile attacks? Um, right, next then. So using Men's Adventure as the jumping off point in the, in the chain, I read uh, Men's Adventure novels, The Survivalist Book 11, The Reprisal by Jerry Ahern. So this is a kind of post-apocalyptic um, series set at this stage in the series, 500 years after a nuclear war. Um, and about this this steely-eyed guy, John Rourke, going around trying to save the world and his family. So that was, that was fun. Um, then the final book from my original TBR, which I'd kind of been reading through the month, um, Mary's Monster by Lita Judge, which was another Patreon buddy read, this time with my patron Diane. Um, so this is a really nicely done children's book about the life of Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein, about all the appalling things she went through in her life and, and how she came to create the character of, of Frankenstein and, and the creature. Really beautifully done, fantastic illustrations. I, I really, really enjoyed that. Right, so we are nearly at the end now, so just five books left to go. So I then went on a, a bit of a men's adventure splurge. So after The Survivalist, I then read uh, book 20 in the Executioner series, uh, which is New Orleans Knockout, which has Macmillan and the Executioner going to New Orleans and taking out the Mafia. Um, I then read um, Able Team uh, book 20, Shot to Hell by Dick Stivers. So the Able Team series is like a spin-off series from the Executioner series. So this is about the, the Able Team going to Honduras to fight communist guerrillas. Um, so definitely quite dated politically, but it was fun. Um, I then read um, Sabbat Book 2, The Blood Merchants by Guy and Smith. So like the Able Team book, it features a guy, guy on the cover with a moustache. Uh, so you've got this character here. He's got a moustache. Sabbat has a moustache. So this is a very pulpy... Um, British horror novel about um, this guy investigating this weird fascist cult. Um, then read, uh, so the connection here, the tenuous connection here being that the characters on the front are both wearing black jumpers. Um, so this was uh, Phoenix Force, uh, which one is it? Phoenix Force book four, Tigers for Justice, or Tigers of Tigers, Tigers of Justice, sorry. Uh, Tigers of Justice by Gail Wilson, uh, which is about the Phoenix Force, which is another spin-off spin series from the Mac Bolan books, um, trying to um, rescue a nuclear power plant that's been uh, kind of invaded by ninjas, basically. Uh, so that was quite fun. And then the final book of the month, another Mac Bolan book. Uh, so book 21, Firebase Seattle, uh, which is set in Seattle, and, and again has him taking down the mafia. So another fun entry in the executioner series. Right, I don't know about you. I'm a bit exhausted. I've got a bit of a sore throat after talking about 57 books, but hopefully you enjoyed that. Hope you had a wonderful reading month in December. Hope you wrapped up the year nicely and had a brilliant reading year overall. Um, look forward to doing all of this again uh, in January. So I've got my. TBR for January, so I put on the video for that a little while ago, as I said at the start, aiming to finish the um, the Rebot Your Own Challenge in January. The thing I forgot when I filmed that TBR video is that I also have all of the submissions for the Garb August uh, anthology um, that I need to, to read during probably January and February as well, so I need to read um, a fair number of those in January too, so we'll see how I get on. Um, but anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff, and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.